Welcome to Sports Shorts Daily, presented by LaBear's Casino, a, a Friday morning edition. We got Playboy Marty in the house with us, and longtime sports writer, uh, reporter Glenn Gilbo. How are you, Glenn? Good morning, Ronnie. Playboy. Thanks. Thanks for uh, coming on the show. Um, you know, not even with COVID and Corona, and and not being able to be at practice, and and and, and is there going to be a season? There's still no lack of uh, of interest and conversation when it comes to LSU and and college football. Unfortunately, nobody saw this coming. Um, where the, the interest and the conversation about LSU football would be not about the upcoming schedule, but this week it's all been about the off-field uh, incidences uh, involving Darius Geis' alleged 2016 incidences at LSU. We know he's also facing some criminal charges uh, up in the D.C. area. Um, it's amazing how, Glenn, you've been covering LSU football for a very long time. It seems like every year there's an August off-the-field story, some bigger than others, some more controversial than others, and this year didn't let us down once again. Well, you know, actually that hasn't happened in a while. There was a stretch there where it was every August uh, when Coach Miles was, was at LSU. But, uh, you know, Coach Joe's had a pretty, uh, pretty good record of, of discipline since he's been the coach as far as publicly what's, what's happening. And, and uh, this was when he was an assistant coach at LSU and then later a head coach. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's terrible news about Darius. I mean, I wrote a lot of great things about Darius and really took up for him when he fell in the draft, which um, I think was separate a bit from what I've read. And apparently the NFL didn't know about these accusations on draft day. But, you know, and, the, and guys fall for weird reasons in the draft. Glenn, you there? You froze oh. up on us. Um, I'll let Playboy Marty weigh in a little bit here as he drinks a Truly on a Friday morning. Hey, so hey, hey, we got we to gotta speed this up. I'm going to be at the beach later today. <laughs> love, love the fact that you're getting the party started so early. Uh, <laughs> no, no mimosas for you, just right to the seltzer beers. Um, yeah. but, but Playboy Marty, I, I know that uh, uh, I know we want to be talking about the schedule and want to talk about how many wins yeah. they're going to have. Are they going to have back-to-back -back national championships? Are they going to play or not? But – these are some serious off the field accusations. Um, the la first couple of days that it came out, it didn't look really good for LSU. Now we're starting to see where maybe they had things a little bit more buttoned up than we thought. Yeah, and uh, I thought I thought Coach O's statement that he released on Twitter last night was was really good because and and I said that on here that whole part of the article always seemed like the most like off base like part of it that seemed just so out of context to me out of character uh so uh yeah i was pretty happy with that statement and uh like i just i hope this is the last time we talk about it because i feel like a lot of damage has been done and like we just i don't i don't know it's just it it's unfortunate and sad and i've i've talked about it at length on here already enough i think let me ask you this, Glenn, as far as the, um, you know, there was the alleged accusations that Coach uh, O made, obviously, a flippant comment about a player that was wanting to transfer, about how, how everybody's girlfriend sleeps with other people. He's come out and obviously denied that big time and said that that did not happen. And, and, and you know, I think for the most part, the way he answered that, you know, you can kind of maybe give him the benefit of the doubt on it. Um, from LSU standpoint, have they said enough – um, or do you expect we're going to get a, lot, a dump of information in the weeks ahead from them on how they handle this situation? I don't think so. I, I think the president, interim president, said the right thing yesterday. They're going to review uh, how the school, particularly the Title IX office, handled or really didn't handle the accusations. Uh, that's what the school needs to look at. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I, I think Coach O's statement was okay, but that was only about one of the women's accusations, which right. he was only involved with one of the women's accusations in the story, but he didn't deny any knowledge of the, of the other accusation. And I think, you know, I, I thought that was a little fishy part of the story, too, and it was clear to me that Coach O was trying to console this kid who was, whose heart was broken, and, and Coach O used the word heartbreaking in his statement. Um, so I think that's important to know, regardless of the language he may have used. But, you know, in the story, the kid says that 
you know, Coach O knew about uh, the incident, the well, alleged incident. That, that's what we don't know. And, and, you know, it's very plausible that none of the coaches knew about it because, you know, I could see these people at the Title IX office or this diving coach or the tennis coach, Julius Sell. I could see them not telling the football people. And really, it's not the football coach's job to know. That's the Title IX office. That That's the campus, you know, so I, I don't know how, how guilty the LSU coaches may, football coaches may be in this situation, but, but other people are definitely need to be uh, questioned about it at LSU. Do you think this will, this, this one particular handling or could be potentially two particular handlings of these uh, 2016 guys allegations, could this be the Pandora's box that leads to a bigger type of problem? Uh, I don't want to say uh, failure because that was, many, many issues over, over a lot of time. But, I mean, is this something they're going to be able to put in a little bow, you know, and fix? Or is this something that's going to drag on for months and months? I, I don't think so. There was a story on Channel 9 last night, though, that, that quoted a woman athlete. Uh, she, and she was anonymous in the story. They had her screened out. But, you know, she said there's a culture of, of fear to report such things. Um, I don't know if that's completely true. You know, and the interesting thing is LSU just had a football player last spring in a very similar situation, accusation from a woman, and he was suspended immediately from the football team, and he has since transferred. That player's name has been kept out, but everybody's been able to figure it out. But the thing is, that guy wasn't going to play ever at LSU, so they quickly suspended him. Obviously, right. Geis was a star. So that's what LSU needs to work on. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the thing is, that you mentioned the, the, the potential lack of uh, doing a good job on that Title IX office. I know some of the people over there, and they're usually pretty, you know, the other way, you know, almost overly OCD anal about how they handle certain situations. And so the, the, to think that they dropped the ball on this one um, it would, be, uh, would be pretty shocking if indeed that is the case. Um, is it a distraction for this team, or is this just a distraction for the, I guess, the coaching staff and O in particular? As a player, is this something that distracts the, the, the current LSU football team? No, no, because because it happened uh, almost four years ago, and, and Darius is not on the team. So from a football team perspective, no, I don't think it should Im impact them at, at all. But, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how old the accusations are from the women's standpoint and from a legal standpoint and from LSU standpoint, but t the team, no. Well, we've obviously seen that, that time is not an issue when it comes to the more recent cases around the country of sexual misconduct, whether it's Bill Cosby or, or others. We're talking about some of those stories are decades old and, and, and people can, can go to jail for them or, or get sued for them. Um, let's turn, turn our attention a little bit to the- Einstein too. Yeah, Weinstein, Weinstein and everything else. Um, let's turn our attention to the upcoming season. Marty, uh, it came out that the governor of Mississippi um, has already, you know, un unlike Louisiana, it's kind of taking a wait and see approach. Governor of Mississippi has already come out and said, this is what the guidelines are going to be for football. You know, Southern Miss, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, 25% mm -hmm. capacity, mask all the time, and, uh, and no tailgating. That's, that's a big one. Yeah, the no tailgating is a bummer, but honestly, like, people are treating this like it's just, like, the worst news ever. Like, 25% fans, like, there's not fans at any other sporting event. So, if you're saying we get, like, if, if we can have 25,000 people in Tiger Stadium, like, that sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, tailgating, though, like, I would trade a few thousand fans for tailgating, though, for sure. <laughs> Glenn, do you think that that – based on those numbers and what the, what we're hearing out of Mississippi, that that's pretty likely to be a very similar story in Louisiana. What school is more known in the world for tailgating? Right. LSU. I, you can't have tailgating during this, at least start the season. Maybe if the curve flattens and there's some, you know, the virus goes down somewhat, but, but you, you can't have tailgating at, at the king of tailgating. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I doubt if there'll be more than 25% allowed at Tiger Stadium. And I think that's a mistake too, man. I mean, the safest thing is not to have anybody on campus, the way I see it. You know, as far as tailgating is concerned, I mean, you know, 
I just have a hard time thinking that LSU is going to play a football game with fans or without fans and that there's not going to be a, a certain amount of rogue fans that go out there and try to tailgate anyway. I mean, it's going to have to be policed <laughs> extremely strongly. You know? and, yeah, and no, I, I think that too, because if, <laughs> if enough people go out there, I mean, just BRPD isn't large enough to deal with it. If like, yeah, so I mean, I, I'm worried about that too. And like, e either way, like, I mean, people are still going to congregate, like whether it's in someone's like backyard or like something like that. So the no tailgating is not going to prevent people from getting together to watch these games. Like, that. I, I would think, Glenn, that they could figure right. out a way to space it out a little bit, right? Because look, at the end of the day, if you can tell people they can't tailgate, just like Marty said, they're going to be packed together in homes are going to be packed together as much as they can in, in restaurants and, 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 and maybe bars at that time. I mean, so if you're not, if you're trying, if the idea is to try to keep people away from each other, that's not going to get it done. Tailgating is probably safer. Cause it's people outside. Could just say they're, people could just say they're going to see the Mike, the tiger cage or the assembly center, or they're going on a picnic. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, that, uh, peaceful I protest. <laughs> I mean, let's, but, but go. go ahead. No, I was going to say, I mean, you, know, you could set up, people can stand six feet apart. Chairs can be six feet apart. Tailgating, I mean, there's so much, you know, space out there. You, you, if you don't have any fans, it's not like you're going to have the same amount of tailgating. Or even if you have 25,000 fans allowed in the stadium, you're not going to have the same amount of tailgating. It's not going to be like a normal situation. I I, I just hope they, they don't get too crazy about it. I mean, if you know, if, if you walk around and you tell some, give somebody a warning and say, hey, look, y'all are too close together and you've got to come back around, okay, write the, a ticket to the person who's putting on the event. You know, but I think there's a way to manage this without going to zero. Well, maybe, right. but – what I've seen in Baton Rouge, just driving around this this week, I don't see people really adhering to the to the mask thing. I mean, and and when you're at a tailgating thing, you're drinking, you're you're having fun. I don't think there's going to be a lot of adherence to it. So, I just don't know if that's going to work if it allows some tailgating. I mean, it, it's it would be the weirdest thing ever. Now, was the twenty five thousand rule? You, you you're saying, Glenn, you don't you're not a big fan of having twenty five thousand fans, even if they're in the suites, they're in the club, they're you know they're not down on the field wearing masks. Yeah, I mean, you wearing masks, you still have an issue with that. Well, you know, again, people are drinking. They're at a game. They're not going to wear their mask. They might start off wearing their mask, uh, but I just can't. And that's that's also going to be unenforceable. I just I just believe in kind of a cold turkey approach. You know, that make it really hard now. It might get better later instead of half-assing it. Basically, oh, twenty-five percent some tailgate. I, I say cold turkey. Have the game. No fans in the stands virtually at all, and and we, we could see a quicker end to this. Uh, Marty, I gotta. I, you know. We've been dealing with this since March, right? And mm -hmm. when, when, when we started with the whole stay inside and they put all the national and local rules into effect, it was all about flattening the curve. Well, we've, we've sort of flattened the curve, but now it seems like the bar has moved to, we're trying to go to, to zero. And I don't think, and the issue that I have, Glenn and Marty, is that I don't think we're ever going to be at zero when it comes to Corona, not anytime in the, in the near future. I'm not talking about in the next year or two, like it, it's, there's going to, and, and what level of acceptance of the virus do we have as a society to, to, okay, well, it's still out there, but we're going to have to learn to live with it. And I think that that's, the issue is that LSU, five home games, 25,000 fans, that's not going to make or break the curve. And we've obviously shown that we're not willing to put up with any virus. Look at North Carolina, 150 students get it, and all of a sudden they shut down the university and you go virtual and they got over 30,000 students. So my concern is I wish we knew what we were striving for, I guess is the question. Well, the stat I like to look at is uh, uh, not reported cases, but uh, deaths. And those have actually dropped considerably. So I think that's positive. I mean, we definitely need to get our total cases numbers down to that of like Europe. And like, I think, who was it? It was like, like New Zealand, Italy. I think was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I think New Zealand was the first uh, country to report uh, uh, zero cases. Right. I mean, obviously, right. we're not trying to get. Well, we are trying to get there, but that's – we don't need to get there in order to have football. But, uh, yeah, no, I when I look at uh, the deaths dropping significantly, uh, I think eventually we got to look at that and think, okay, that's 
positive. Well, you know, we flattened the curve at first, like in, in May and in June, and then we, then it's kind of like we celebrated that, and then we've never been able to get back to that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you know, maybe maybe soon we can flatten that curve somewhat, but, um, you know, letting all the students back and for school or for, for a game, that's just, I don't think that's going to help flatten the curve. Here we are, August the twenty-first, as we as we uh, do sports shorts daily on this Friday. We are uh, uh, September the twenty-sixth is supposed to be LSU's first game. It will be at home. A lot can happen in just over a month time. Um, right. Are you still optimistic, Glenn, that we will uh, that that the Tigers will take the field when they're expected to? I think I think that LSU will start the season. I think the SEC will start the season. The question is. Um, how long will it last if, if there is an outbreak and a, and a rash or, or, or some consistency, which we're seeing in some in Major League Baseball to an, to an extent. But, um, you know, I, I, hope, I hope they can get them all in. But uh, I, I do think they'll start it. But the question is, how long will it go? Len, where can folks uh, follow you and, and read your great work? Oh, thanks. Uh, LSU Beat Tweet. Uh, I'm uh, doing a story on Miles Brennan that will be up later this morning, uh, usatoday.com, theadvertiser.com. Um, the, the neatest thing you, or maybe something you didn't know about Miles Brennan that, we'll, that, that you reported on that we'll read later today. Well, he really has put on the weight. That we've been hearing that he's going to put on weight for three years and it, it never really worked didn't stick but you can tell just looking at his face you, you know you can tell by looking at a guy's face if they've lost weight or gained weight he's definitely he's different. and and uh he says he said himself the weight is finally stuck he's at about 220 he wants it 175 so that's that's going to help because he needed to be sturdier and we always knew he had the arm so it's going to be interesting to watch miles play this season yeah, 220 is a big jump. I mean, golly, we're talking about 45 pounds that he's gained in his three years at LSU. That's pretty good stuff. All yeah. right, Glenn, look forward to reading that article, uh, USA Today. Check out Glenn Gilbo. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Marty, uh, the uh, your your NBA is in full effect. Uh, they had the they had the lottery last night. The Timberwolves are going to get the first pick. Kind of anticlimactic, right? From last year, you knew it was Zion. This year, it's a bunch of number three, four picks that are battling to be the number one pick, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's much more fun to win the lottery a year where there's a clear-cut number one pick. Uh, I can speak uh, from experience uh, when, well, I guess Lucas should have been the clear-cut number one, and hey, he's who I wanted the year the Suns, like, won the lottery. But, uh, yeah, it kind of uh, it kind of played out how I expected to. Like, I, I didn't expect Golden State to fall. Um I don't know. I, I, I mean, it, they did a pretty good job of making it like semi-normal the way they did it. But uh, yeah, and uh, another highlight, I guess, is the Knicks falling again. Like they just, they just can't get anything. To go if it right. wasn't for bad luck, they'd have no luck, right? Uh, whoever goes is going to join Russell and Towns over there in Minnesota, and it's a couple of good young players. So yeah, we'll and see uh, it, and it invites the because you know uh, D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, and Devin Booker are all like best buddies. Right. So it's inviting the like, oh, are the Suns going to trade Booker for the first pick? Like, and just like, literally, there's going to be a Bleacher Report article today that comes out like saying, if that. the Suns trade Booker, they're 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 the dumbest organization. They won't. They won't. That's the thing. Like, it makes right. like it's just a dumb right. article. Yeah. Um. Well, I thought the the Portland Trailblazers just had a chance, but uh, Damian Lillard. Uh, breaks his left index finger he yeah. says he's going to play in game three but let's face it he dislocated it but I mean he needs to be at 135 percent in order for the oh, Portland yeah. Trailblazers to beat the Lakers he goes out and it's a bloodbath 111 to 88 uh the Lakers beat Portland and 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 it was the Anthony Davis show LeBron didn't even play well um so you know one and one is that series after a couple of games it was Portland was a nice story but now with Lillard's banged up finger they have no chance right uh yeah and uh those are my lakers laker nation lake show uh still uh that ticket's still alive um yeah i mean ad was just a monster and he needed to be because he was not good uh in game one he had good stats but uh i think he uh and Shaq said this uh he had like 21 points at that at halftime in game one and he ended with 28 and like they really needed him down the stretch so i thought it was a really good response game from ad 
Uh, and uh, they showed a stat last night, uh, like going into the game, he at his playoff average, he averages uh, 30 points per game in the playoffs. And that's the highest in NBA history. Um, Silver, uh, Commissioner Silver uh, went ahead and, and announced that he doesn't think December 1st is a realistic start date for the NBA. That's supposed to be the new start date for the 2021 season. Um, he thinks it'll be pushed back. Um, because they have every intention of, play, of getting back to stadiums and hopefully playing in front of fans. They do not want to do the bubble again. I'm sure the players whole, don't want to do the bubble. Whole season, yeah. The league doesn't want to. It costs them tons of money. Um, it's difficult to police, although they've done it effectively. Uh, but I think if you have the bubble again, you're probably going to run into some issues where players just be a lot, a lot more rebellious because it would be for a longer stint of time. And the other thing is, is that, you know, for a long time, people have been talking about why didn't the NBA just start December the 25th uh, on Christmas Day? Because football is so powerful in this country, college mm -hmm. and pro. Um, they get that opportunity potentially to push back and start December 25th, which I think is probably a, it should be something they should consider, right? Oh, yeah, me too. No, and, and I've said that. i said that on me and Mince's show uh, for years. Like, it makes sense. Like, because those first few weeks of the NBA season, like, uh, like mid uh, – mid-October, like, like, and on, like, you, you're having – the NBA has trouble, like, getting segments on radio shows, just in general. Right. right. Like, so, yeah, why not push it back? This, uh, like, Christmas has kind of been – because the NBA Christmas Day has become such a big thing. That's kind of when people start paying attention as, like, the uh, NFL regular season's winding down. Uh, I would love it. And then we don't have that that uh, uh, portion of the summer where all we have is Major League Baseball. And, like, I, I like Major League Baseball, but uh, – among the major sports, it's probably the one I'm least interested in. So if we could cut that down and like have NBA playoffs during that time, I'm for it. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, current, you know, basically you'd be looking at if, if, if you feel it was just simply slide in the schedule, you'd be looking at it ended in August, which yeah, we have preseason camp and all that sort of thing. But would you rather watch preseason football? Or would you rather watch NBA finals? You know, right. So, it'd be great. It'd be great. We'd have right. the whole playoffs and then we go right into football. The second it's over, right. it'd be perfect. Right. And I think their ratings would be, do a lot better, too. So something to look forward to, and and, and uh, we'll see. But first, the uh, playoffs are in full effect, and we'll be watching. Um, all right, where are you headed to, Marty? You headed to the beach? Uh, Santa Rosa Beach. Very nice. Yeah, Very I'm nice. not driving. Make sure you use SPF 50. You're going to need it. Okay? Oh, yeah, I'm a pale boy. We will. <laughs> All right, we'll be back next week with more Sports Shorts Daily. He's Playboy Marty, headed to the beach. I'm Ronnie Rand. Special thanks to Glenn Gilbo, who joined us. You can check him out on usatoday.com. Does a great job. Uh, been covering sports for over 30 years. Have a great week, everybody.